Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. And prepare to be amazed and astounded. We have four individual breadboards and a bunch of breadboard components. And at the snap of my fingers, boom, negative entropy. This is incredible. This is an almost complete 4-bit binary counter. This is exactly what we wanted. As you know, we're trying to create non-biological human consciousness, but before we do that, we are going to build artificial neurons, and before we build artificial neurons, we're going to build a 4-bit computer on breadboards using individual transistors. And this circuit is a really good start to that. So let's take a closer look at how this circuit works. Let's start by looking at the top of the circuit. This right here is an A-stable multivibrator. Right here we can see the circuit diagram for it, and we're actually going to use this as the clock for the entire computer and for the clock of this 4-bit binary counter. So what we want to do is send the output from this A-stable multivibrator into these buffers, which will then allow it to be displayed on this 4-bit LED display. And we can do this by connecting this one blue wire right here. So whenever we do that, now we can see that the output of the last bit is going on off, on off, on off. So now we actually have the first bit of our counter working. And now I hooked up the output of this last bit to the oscilloscope so we can see the waveform. And you can see that this is a nice square wave. Next, what we want to do is we want to send the inverted output from this A-stable multivibrator into this data flip-flop. And we can do this by connecting this one red wire. So it's going to connect the red wire, it's going to go into this trigger, and then it's going to go into this data flip-flop. Let's see what happens whenever we hook this up. And now we can see that we have an output coming out of our data flip-flop. Well, now we want to send this output to our display. So we have to run it through these buffers. And we can do this by connecting this blue wire right here. So now the output is going to this buffer and it's being output in this display. And look at what's going on. Now it's starting to count. We have one, two, three, off. One, two, three, off. One, two, three, off. This is unbelievable. All right, now the oscilloscope is hooked up to these two bits and we can see that this is actually acting like a frequency divider. This is incredible. The yellow is bit one and the purple is bit two. And you can see that the purple square wave is twice the duration of the yellow square wave. So now let's look at how this is actually working. We have a trigger and we have a data flip-flop. Let's start with the trigger. So this data flip-flop is edge triggered, which means we don't just send the entire clock signal, we just wanna send a small spike. And we can actually build the trigger like this. So we send the clock input, into an inverter and into one input of an AND gate. So if we send this clock input and it's on, this one's going to be on and this one's going to be on, which means this one's going to be off, which actually means that this AND gate will never turn on in theory. However, whenever this input comes in, there's actually a small delay and this inverter will still be on for a very short duration. So short that it actually won't work with just one inverter. However, if we use seven inverters and an AND gate, now this is going to have some type of a substantial delay. It's still going to be really, really small, but there is going to be some delay. And this trigger is built with an AND gate right here. The output of the clock is coming into one of the inputs of the AND gate, and it's also getting sent to this inverter right here, and then this inverter, this inverter, this inverter, this one, this one, this one, and then the output from this whole thing is going to be sent right here into the clock input of our data flip-flop. Now we hooked up our oscilloscope so that we can see the output of this trigger on the oscilloscope. And you can see right here, here is one of those pulses. And if we just trigger our oscilloscope, we can see how consistent this is. We are getting pulses that are pretty similar. So now let's look at how wide this pulse is. So that's 200 nanoseconds per division, which means that this pulse is about 400 nanoseconds wide. That's what you want. You want a really short pulse for these edge-triggered data flip-flops. If you're not familiar with how flip-flops work, 
I have a simple example right here. This is actually a gated SR latch, but it's built very similar to this data flip-flop. And if I push this button right here, the bit switches states. So this SR latch temporarily stores, or actually permanently stores, one bit of information until this button is pushed, or this button is pushed. And it just toggles back and forth. That's why it's called a flip-flop. But the data flip-flop does it automatically. There's an inverter here, and the output from this bit gets fed up to the inverter, and it also gets fed into the input here. And that makes it so that every time there is a clock pulse, this will automatically switch back and forth. All right, so we wanna send the inverted output from this data flip-flop into this trigger. And we're going to do that by connecting this red wire right here. So now you can see that we have an output coming out of this data flip-flop. And we wanna send that output to the display, which we do by connecting this blue wire right here. So now our output is going to the display. And look at what we have. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, off. This is incredible. All right, and this is worth noting. This data flip-flop right here was actually built using four NAND gates. And this data flip-flop right here was actually built using two NOR gates and two AND gates. So these function in a very similar way, but they're actually built a little bit differently. But now, here's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's the Master Slave JK flip-flop. This one is awesome. There is no trigger. So now we're going to take the regular output from this data flip-flop, not the inverted output, and we're going to send it to this JK flip-flop. And we're going to do that by connecting this red wire right here. And then we're going to send it to our display by connecting this blue wire right here. So now this should be working properly. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, off. It's working! This is unbelievable! If you want to build this, here is the circuit diagram. I'm not gonna draw it at the transistor level. If you don't know how to build these logic gates, watch my video on how to build digital logic gates and it will make sense. You can actually make a uh, binary counter two different ways. You can do it with four data flip-flops or you can do it with four JK flip-flops. If you do it with four master slave JK flip-flops, that's probably the most robust way to build this. And I'm actually going to make another video about triggers. There's actually another way to make a trigger with just a capacitor and a resistor. So far with our computer, we have this, which is a four bit calculator which we are going to use as part of our ALU. And now we have our four bit binary counter. So now I'm going to work to build a four bit register and then try and incorporate all of these circuits together as the next step in the computer. I didn't actually fully explain how a lot of these circuits work. So I am going to be making other videos about how to build this clock and how these JK flip-flops and these data flip-flops actually work. So if you're interested in those videos, click right here.